Welcome back to Metal Heroes Review, episode number four. This I'm only discussing two episodes this time because as far as I want to go with the series right now, because I'm taking a break to work on Plunderer. But before I work on that, I gotta work on two new anime that came out. One came out actually a few days ago, but I review my review on Fridays. The other one is Case Close, obviously. In these two episodes, these are pretty kind of interesting ones per se. It's like the the theme of these ones are let's throw in a couple Super Sentai alumni in this in this one. The first one we have, believe it or not, Queen Hedra, like the very same year that uh, that Sun Vulcan ended. We had this episode air. Where she's a double monster. This is probably the first time she's done a one-shot character I can think of since Bad Eye Fever J. And that came out three years prior to this thing. Yeah, playing a B monster. Well, a B doubler. Well, the the name is Honey B Honey B doubler. That's what it is. Now her basic thing is that she wants the whole thing use healthcare to raise money for the Moroku. And she is the one in charge. She's, I think she's also by far the first female monster in the entire series of Space Sheriff Gavin. Yeah, the very first one. And the way the characters play and her attitude, it's like, wow. It's like the writer just basically took Queen Hedra, took out the name, uh, took association with an alien. It's like they gave her the same exact personality that she had at playing Queen Hedra. Like, here's some examples. Does like me because she's young and hot, because and she wants to kill her. I'm like, that sounds a lot like Queen Hedra. It's like the writer of this one is probably either number one a writer from Denzi Man or two somebody who liked Denzi Man and pretty much had basically uh, Marinko Songo, the the actress who plays her, who also is known for playing Witch Vidora from Zoo Ranger, who basically Vidora just happened to be the biological with her is Rio Posa from My Fire Rangers. And yes, it's raining here right now where I am. I'm my house. So. <clears throat> so. Yeah, and of course they basically run a healthcare center. Now you're probably thinking, a healthcare center. The actors come like, yeah, this is the 1980s. Of course they would have something like this. And the way the alph outfits are, yeah, typical, standard, 1980s. Now I should point out that at the time when this aired... The actress was 44 years old. Yes, 44 years old. And despite the fact this aired like roughly about six months after uh, Sun Vulcan ended, she looked like she did age a little bit. Despite the fact it's been six months, she looked a bit older than she was. I mean, she looked great in Bad Fever J and Denzel Man and Sun Vulcan. Despite being in her early 40s, here she's pushing mid 40s. And she definitely does look a little older. So, and also Mimi, like, breaks into the place with, with, with Gavin. Also, we also have the the one return, I as far as I can even pop next episode. The owner of the Avalon Club, he gets injured and, yeah, it's almost like basically the whole thing with the Avalon Club is like they're there early on and then they're just dropped. Yeah, I don't know if he appears after this one, after this very episode. I have no idea. Because Ooh. I'm not going to watch the next episodes of the 22 until I get done with Plunderer. So, yeah, also one point, Kundro, who is who's actually Gavin's like best friend, who basically assess the UFOs. Yeah, he becomes Honey Honey's assistant. Though, and of course, they mention how beautiful she is. I'm like, she's 40, the actress is 44 years old. She actually looks okay for her age. I'm not having anything against the actress herself. And I'm not going to say anything bad about her at all because she's no longer alive. And number two, I never met her. Nope, never did. She's definitely one of those people I would love to met. I would love to talk to her about Denzi Man, some Vulcan, probably this episode here. But she passed away in 2006, roughly 16 years ago. So, would I get a chance to meet any of the people who worked on Super Sentai? Well, if they have Power Morphicon outside of California, I might do that. Because apparently Power Morphicon is only in California. Go figure. <clears throat> so, yeah, and of course, 
they, of course, he does. Greg Gavin deals deal with him at the very end. And then 22 is another Super Sentai alumni, the actor who plays Battle Japan. And this will be also also just appeared in some. He actually appeared in Denzi Man. Yeah, he just like this is two people from Denzi Man appearing in two straight episodes. Yeah, he pops up here and he's a thief. Well, he has to steal back a jewel that was taken from his father, who was a gym soul dealer. And of course, we have this gangster involved who is working for Moroku. So they get, which. Yeah, it seems like Sam and Gangster Fair. Also, apparently, according to Gavin, this is also standard Maruku MO when they do something like this, where when they buy something, like, okay, kill the seller, or actually kill the one who's actually buying it, kill the buyer, take the money and the jewel, though the jewel they're taking basically gets taken away, then, of course, he... By the way, Don Hor briefly appears in the middle of the episode, episode 22. It's the same thing for the previous episode. Here's briefly the beginning, briefly the middle, and of course does a thing called the thing where he like draw him into the, the Moroku space. Also, we have this thing where in the in episode twenty two he battles the Moroku space. The, they do something slightly different. They do hop around the place, fire the laser off. We actually have Sam laying on the ground like a couple times this happened. He actually lands on the Moroku fighter, gets inside, starts fighting. Of course, this also is the episode where he brings out. This is the second time I've seen this half where he brings it to the his where Gabby gets to his personal Zord twice in one episode. And also we still have the creature going giants, that's apparently for no reason at all, though is it being there less. <coughs> Me. Yeah, being there less and uh yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh two pretty good episodes. Still enjoying this series. And as of now, I am taking my break from the series, just so I can work on Plunderer. And I'll be back to finish it up, and afterwards, I will definitely start up Kamen Rider X. Yep, but before I start up Plunderer, I'm going to read some comics, and then I'm going to watch The Great Jaw Will Not Be Defeated, and case closely to those two views out hopefully today. Okay, next video. Bye.